Hi, I'm Dr. James Amos. I'm a consulting psychiatrist at the University Hospital in Iowa City, and I put together this um, short uh, presentation on uh, delirium uh, called The Dirty Dozen on Delirium. I've got a dozen slides that will be put together with uh, a short post, uh, or actually a long post, on uh, my blog site, The Practical Psychosomaticist, and uh, you can find your way to that uh, by simply Googling the practical psychosomaticist or Jim Amos's blog or go to jajsamos.wordpress.com. So um, the, uh, the slides uh, uh, are brief and to the point and I've uh, included them on the post and I've also included the slide sets that you can um, read through and there's also a, uh, a brief uh, quiz at the end of the post to test uh, how much you've learned from uh, the presentation. Uh, the uh, uh, slide three is uh, um, a list of delirium resource materials that I use to put together the presentation. Uh, most of them are from my blog site and uh, from other uh, useful websites uh, that I found instrumental in uh, both learning and teaching about delirium. Uh, the Vanderbilt University website for ICU delirium uh, that uh, has um, Dr. Wes Ely as one of its leaders is an excellent site. Uh, the Hartford Institute for Geriatric Nursing has an excellent video that's uh, um, uh, about an hour long and uh, never once mentions <clears throat> a psychiatrist <clears throat> in the production of that particular video. Uh, the Hospital Elder Life Program, the help site, uh, um, with Dr. Sharon uh, Anouye as its leader, is also an excellent uh, resource. Uh, a couple of organizations, including the American Delirium Society and the European Delirium Association, are wonderful. Uh, and there are a couple of books that uh, I think um, are also helpful. Um, one, of course, is um, a book that I co edited, so I'm going to have to uh, plug it. Uh, this is the uh, Psychosomatic uh, Medicine Introduction to Consultation Liaison Psychiatry, edited by myself and uh, my colleague, Dr. Robert G. Robinson, and it has an excellent chapter in it about delirium, uh, written by several authors, including Gregory Fritchion. Uh, the other book that's excellent uh, resources is Delirium in Critical Care, the only book of its kind that I know of about delirium in the ICU, uh, at least so far. Uh, of its quality, uh, written by Valerie Page, an intensivist in the uh, United Kingdom, and Wes Ely, who I've already mentioned, at, uh, uh, at Vanderbilt. Uh, excellent resources, and I highly recommend them. Uh, the uh, next slide is about uh, the delirium learning goals and objectives, and I would like to uh, have uh, learners come away from this raising awareness about, uh, uh, raising awareness about delirium in the hospitalized medically ill, learn how to detect delirium, and learn how to manage, treat, and prevent uh, delirium. Uh, the uh, fifth slide is asking the question and trying to answer it about what is delirium. And uh, what you want to take away from this is that it's an acute brain injury. Uh, it's uh, by definition a medical emergency and it's not a psychiatric problem per se. Uh, one definition that Sharon Anouye has advanced is that it's a symptom of how hospital care is failing older persons and uh, there are systemic reasons and cultural reasons in hospitals why that is so. Uh, there is also a slide on uh, diagnosing delirium. Uh, the uh, uh, DSM-4 uh, diagnostic criteria are also a part of this presentation. And it's basically a disturbance of consciousness with reduced ability to focus, sustain, or shift attention. Uh, it develops over a short period of time and often fluctuates, which is what fools um, uh, many doctors and nurses. Uh, it's a change in cognition, basically, uh, and uh, the development of perceptual disturbances. It's not accounted for by a pre-existing, established, or evolving dementia. Uh, the, there is evidence from uh, the uh, history, physical, or laboratory examination that uh, the cause or causes are medical, uh, uh, a general medical conditions, substance intoxication, or withdrawal, uh, and usually there are many medical causes. And there are a couple of subtypes, hypoactive and hyperactive. The hypoactive uh, type, uh, subtype of delirium is often mistaken 
for depression and apathy, and the hyperactive uh, subtype is immediately recognizable and diagnosable by the janitor, uh, in which uh, patients are wildly agitated, uh, very disturbed, uh, often having visual hallucinations and tearing out their lines and such, and uh, constitute a danger to themselves and others. Uh, the uh, next slide uh, is the clinical features and risk factors of uh, delirium, and you'll see those there on, on the blog site. Uh, delirium uh, mimics primary psychiatric disorders, which is uh, often why psychiatrists uh, get called first as consultants. It's a disorder of consciousness, a disorder of affect, behavior, and cognition, and also a disorder of perception, uh, often marked by visual hallucinations. Predisposing and precipitating risk factors have been uh, identified by Inouye uh, many years ago. Predisposing risk factors are things like um, being older than age 65, cognitive impairment or dementia, uh, premorbidly, um, severe medical illness and dehydration. Precipitating risk factors occur in the hospital and they're often associated with adding more than three new medications, a very common circumstance, uh, having a urinary catheter or other type of restraining device. Uh, such as chest tubes, uh, any iatrogenic event or uh, event that is caused by uh, uh, treatment of uh, the medical illness, physical restraints, and malnutrition. Uh, there's another slide uh, about delirium prevalence and outcomes. Uh, it's about a 20 to 30 per, uh, percent prevalence in the general hospital. It can range up to 80 percent in uh, the ICUs and palliative care units. Uh, the uh, Outcomes uh, uh, are often, especially in the elderly, increased length of stay, uh, admission to long-term care facilities after discharge from the hospital, and increase in mortality. It costs billions of dollars anywhere uh, between 40 to 150 billion dollars uh, annually nationally, and uh, it's a marker of quality of care and patient safety, uh, as defined by the National Quality Measures Clearinghouse of the Agency for Healthcare Research. Delirium prevention, by the way, would reduce acute and long-term uh, costs in the U U.S. Uh, etiology and pathophysiology is the next slide, and uh, you can look at that. Uh, the uh, uh, brain neurotransmitters involved are acetylcholine and dopamine, and there's an inverse uh, sort of uh, relationship between those two with an excess of dopamine that accounts for a lot of the psychotic symptoms uh, that you often see in delirium. Uh, delirium screening and detection is very important, and uh, there are um, several links to, in this slide to um, resources uh, on my blog post, uh, or on my blog site and elsewhere. And uh, the uh, confusion assessment method, the uh, CAM, is sort of the, uh, uh, the, the main uh, delirium screening instrument that can be used by nurses, and the delirium observation screening scale of the DOS is also uh, uh, very serviceable. Both of these are copyrighted, and you must ask the uh, authors, uh, Sharon Nouye and uh, uh, Mary Shurmans, uh, for the permission to use them. And uh, uh, they um, uh, can be completed, uh, each of them, in about five minutes by nurses. Uh, preventing delirium uh, using non pharmacologic strategies is very important. And this involves frequent orienting, having uh, sensory aids like eyeglasses and hearing aids available and preventing organic drivers like hypoxia, acidosis, and infection. Multi-component strategies, uh, the best example of this is the uh, Hospital at Elder Life Program or the Health Program at Yale, started by Dr. Inouye. These can be effective in preventing delirium. Uh, they um, really involve for, uh, providing excellent medical care. Uh, pharmacologic treatment of delirium uh, is uh, uh, in its preliminary stages in terms of uh, research. Uh, there are promising results. Uh, the first and foremost uh, intervention, though, is to treat the underlying medical conditions. Uh, both Haldol and the newer so-called atypical antipsychotics are helpful. Uh, one has to be mindful of uh, the risk to the demented elderly, and that's why there is an FDA black box warning uh, about using them in the demented elderly, because they can increase the risk of mortality. You avoid benzodiazepines for the most part unless somebody's in an alcohol or sedative hypnotic withdrawal, in which case benzodiazepines are the treatment of choice. Prevention studies with antipsychotics are promising, but uh, uh, these studies are early on uh, in uh, uh, 
uh, their research, and uh, they can't be recommended as standard of care as yet. Uh, prevention using sleep-wake cycle regulators like melatonin, uh, this research is also in its infancy. Uh, what's uh, uh, compelling about melatonin is that it's a, a natural substance found in the human brain, and uh, there's low incidence of side effects. Uh, so those are uh, the slides, and I, uh, uh, I hope that you enjoy the, uh, the full show on uh, my blog site, uh, and uh, there'll probably uh, be questions and comments that you have uh, about delirium, uh, especially as it occurs in uh, the hospitalized elderly. I encourage you to um, ask questions and make comments on the blog site. Uh, thanks very much uh, for your attention. And, um, oh my goodness, look at the time. I have to go to work.